All right, so let's talk about how the drugs act at the postsynaptic side of the synapse, okay? So what we see here are five different ways they can act, okay? The first one is an activation of a neurotransmitter. We can shut it down. Now, physostigmine does that. It uh, works to block acetylcholinesterase, similar to what we talked about earlier with the biological weapons or sarin gas. And, and so it'll increase acetylcholine at the synapse. It'll prevent it from being reuptaken. Number two, there's what can happen is an alternation of uh, the number of receptors that sit on the postsynaptic cell can happen. And we know that both alcohol and heroin can do this. Both alcohol and heroin can create this homeostatic imbalance so that we have more or less receptors sitting at the synapse. Number three, blockade of receptors. We can block receptors, okay? And we have several drugs that do that. Antipsychotic meditation, uh, antipsychotic drugs typically block dopamine, okay? And so that's the way they act to prevent psychotic events in people who suffer from schizophrenia and such. Number four, activation of receptors. This is classically agonistic uh, behavior. So we have nicotine that acts as a acetylcholine agonist, LSD that works as a 5-HT agonist, a serotonin agonist. Okay, so they can act in that way. Um, and then, of course, number three, backtracking a little bit, blockade of receptors. Those are classically uh, antagonists as well. Number five, um, activation of second messenger systems. This gets a little complicated, so... Uh, you have an initial neurotransmitter that binds. It creates a cascade effect of enzymatic activity that creates some sort of EPSP or IPSP, or even it can stimulate activity within the nucleus. Lithium is classic in that sense. Lithium is used to control bipolar disorder and uh, still a bit misunderstood, but it's believed to affect the second messenger cascade in there. So those are five different examples of how um, drugs can act at the postsynaptic level.